Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to talk about Tinkercad and I am going to build a car parking assistant on Tinkercad. So first of all, we will go to tinkercad.com. Here, you will see an option to sign in. So if you haven't created any account yet, you can join Tinkercad. I have already created an account, so I am just going to sign in using my email address. As soon as you sign in, you will see the dashboard of Tinkercad, which appears something like this. On the left, you will see options for 3D designs, for circuits, and for code blocks. We are going to use circuits to create an embedded system application for car parking assistant. So we will just click on this create a new circuit. As soon as you click on this create a new circuit, it will create a circuit and here you can just type in the name of the project which could be say a car parking assistant for this example. So we are going to create a car parking assistant. In any embedded systems, we have three main components. The first component is the brain or the microcontroller. So we'll just search a microcontroller and you will see Arduino microcontroller. In this example, I'm going to use Arduino microcontroller. To be specific, I'm going to use Arduino Uno microcontroller. So after clicking on this icon, which is for rotation, you can rotate it. I made it vertical instead of horizontal. So in this application, which is a car parking assistant, the idea is that the car driver should be indicated about the safe distance from the garage wall. So for that, we would need some uh, LEDs as well as a distance sensor. Before I drag these sensors and these output devices to this project area, I'm going to first of all drag a breadboard. So I'll just drag a breadboard here, a breadboard and then I'm also going to rotate it, make it vertical. So as you can see, this has a lot of dots. These dots are basically inserts for connections. It has a lot of rows and 10 columns here. So here we have 30 rows and 10 columns. If you look, if you hover on one of the rows, say 1A, you will see that all of these are connected. So basically each row is connected horizontally. So A, B, C, D, E are connected. And if you go to any other one, say 5, 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, and 5E are connected with one another. And if you go here, so you see 1J, 1I, 1H, 1G, and 1F are connected. Likewise, 10F, 10G, 10H, 10I, 10J are connected. So we have a total of 30 horizontal wires here on the right side as well as on the left side. And then on each side we have these two vertical wires which we also call as power rails for breadboards so we have a positive power rail and we have a negative power rail so all the points so all the inserts are connected with one another so if there is a potential of say 5 volts here then it would appear on each and every dot here likewise if there is a ground here then the terminal and then the voltage on each insert is going to be ground volt. So the first thing that we are going to use or we are going to do is we are going to connect this positive rail with the 5 volts power supply of Arduino microcontroller which is pretty easy. We just click on a wire and then it will make the wire by itself and then we just go to the so here we have 5 volts ground of Arduino microcontrollers and here we have digital pins and here we have analog input pins. If you are going to use digital pins for outputting as well as for inputting data from the environment. So it's a nice practice to use 
proper colors for wires. So we are going to use a red wire for 5 volts supply and we are going to use a black color wire for supplying the ground to this ground rail. So this is the power. Now we are going to use the input device which is an ultrasonic sensor. So we are going to use a 4 terminal ultrasonic sensor which has 4 terminals. One of them is VCC, the power, 5 volts supply would go here. Then we have ground towards the right. And then we have two pins which are the trigger and echo pins. These trigger and echo pins actually are useful in determining the distance of the object. In this case it's going to be the car from the ultrasonic sensor or from the embedded system. So we are going to rotate this ultrasonic sensor. We are going to click this rotate icon. So it's going to be rotated. And then I'm just going to put it like this. Maybe somewhere here. So this ground terminal should go to the ground rail. We could have a black color wire here and then this VCC should go to the power terminal. We could use red one. And then we have the trigger and echo pins. So the trigger pin would go to say let's connect it with pin number two. And the echo and the trigger pin goes to pin number three. So the echo pin goes to pin number two and the trigger pin goes to pin number three. So this is the sensor that we are going to use in this embedded system. And then we have output devices which we are going to use are the LEDs. So we drag the LED which has two terminals. The left one is cathode and the right one is anode. So if the voltage at the anode terminal is more than cathode by a certain amount then this LED glows. Usually it's about 2 volts of voltage drop that appears across the LED. So again I'm gonna rotate it. So it's gonna be the red LED and then I can just copy by using Ctrl C and paste it using Ctrl V. So I have so we, I have connected both of these LEDs in parallel which means that their cathodes are connected together as well as their anode are connected together. I can also copy it into another row so this one and since we are using a graphic light model so we could use a yellow color here and then I can just copy and paste this yellow color LED here and then I'm gonna copy this LED here like this and change its color to green and then copy and paste like this. Since the voltage drop across the LED is 2 volts and this Arduino microcontroller supplies 5 volts of voltage so we need a protector for the LEDs which could be a resistor. So we are going to use a resistor here. Again and its value could be 200 volt or to say 220 ohms. And then I am going to rotate it. And connect it to the negative supply of the ground and then just copy and paste it like this and like this. So A, B, C, D, E are connected to the other terminal of the resistor and its one terminal is connected to the ground but since A, B, C, D, E are connected but they are not connected with F, G, H, I, J. So I am going to insert or connect them together with wires. 
since this is the negative terminal we could choose say black color wires and then the anode could go to any pin say let's use pin number 13 for the red LED pin number 12 the yellow LED and pin number 11 for the green LED so we can adjust their positions as well and we can also change their colors so red goes for the red yellow for the yellow LED and green for the green LED so we have created the circuit, now we need to implement logic for this code, for this embedded system. So how do we implement a code? So basically you just connect this and you just click on this code. As soon as you click on this one, you will see a default program which is setting the built-in LED to high for one second and then setting it to low for one second we are not going to use this one we are just going to throw it into the trash we could just drag it here for a while just for clarity so the first thing that we are going to use is basically um, we are going to create a variable to store the distance value and we are going to set the distance to the actual distance we are which, which we are going to get from the um, ultrasonic sensor which is an input to this Arduino microcontroller so we are going to get this data from the ultrasonic and the ultrasonic trigger pin is connected to pin number 3 and echo pin is connected to the 2 pin number 2 so this is going to be pin number 3 and this is going to be pin number 2 and the distance is going to be in centimeters so this distance which the ultrasonic sensor is going to measure is going to be stored in the variable name distance now the idea is as soon as a car enters the garage if the distance is safe then we should indicate that the driver could proceed and we are going to indicate it by the green color and then as soon as it approaches the appropriate spot then the green LED should turn to yellow which indicates the driver that he or she needs to or prepare to stop if needed and reduce the speed of the car and as soon as the driver or the car comes to the correct location then the LED, red LED should turn on which would indicate the driver that he or she needs to stop at this spot because this spot is the safest position uh, for the car to park and there is enough space behind as well as at the front of the car so what we are going to do is going to use these controls which contains different blocks so this is known as the if block which basically says that if the distance is um, so it's going to be a conditional statement so what we are going to do is that we are just going to say if the distance is say between this range then we should do this if it is between this range then we should do this so on and so forth so the first thing it's you can see there is a hexagon here which means that we need to insert something and if you click on this um, math block it will sh show something like this so there should be a condition say if the distance is 
to just insert like this so if the distance is say more than 150 centimeter then we should not turn on any LEDs because most likely the car has not entered the garage or is too far from the battery system device so we will just set the pin number 13, 12 and 11 to low which are the output pins so we are going to set these pins pin number 13, 12 and 13 to low and then we can just duplicate it and insert it so we could say pin number 12 should go to low and then we can also duplicate this one and we can say pin number 11 should be set to low so if the car is very far from the front wall then we need to turn off all the LEDs to conserve power as well as uh, the driver might not, be able, might not be even able to see it so this is the first condition now if the distance is between say 150 and 100 centimeters then we need to turn on the green LEDs that would indicate that the, it is safe for the driver to move forward so again we will just go to the control and then we connect this one but now we have two conditions the distance must be less than equal to 150 and it should be greater than 100 so we now insert this one which means that if this condition is satisfied and this condition is satisfied we can change it to AND or OR but in this case we are going to use AND which means that we are going to say if the distance is less than or equal to 150 and it is greater than 100 then we need to turn on the green LED so we will just use this one here and again this one here and we are going to use this distance we are going to use this distance and if it is less than or equal to 150 and if it is greater than 100 then what we are going to do we are going to turn on the green LED which is pin number 11 we could just duplicate this block and insert it here so we are going to set the pin number 11 high now if the car is pulled further then we need to indicate the driver that he or she needs to be cautious and prepared to stop when needed so we will just duplicate this block and insert it here so if the distance is less than equal to 100 but greater than 50 centimeters we need to turn on the yellow LED which means that now the driver should prepare to stop and reduce the speed and as soon as the distance is below or less than 50 centimeters we need to indicate the driver that they need to stop because that's the safest spot to uh, park the car if they move further then there is a chance that they may hit the um, front wall so we are going to just duplicate this one and insert it here and now we are going to turn on the red LED so this is the code so first we get the distance from the ultrasonic sensor which is connected to the pin number 3 and pin number 2 pin number 3 is the trigger pin as pin number 2 is the echo pin and the units are in centimeters so the distance is going to be in centimeters so if the distance is beyond or greater than 150 centimeter then we do not need to turn on any LED and save our power and if it is between 150 and 100 centimeters or 1.5 meters and 1 meter then we turn on the green LED we 
which is connected to pin number 1 and if the distance is reduced to 100 centimeters and it is greater than 50 centimeters then we are going to set the yellow LED and towards the end we are going to set the red LED as soon as the distance is below 50 centimeters. So this is pretty much the coding aspect. Now we are in the position of simulating this code. So if you click on this start simulation, it's going to take some time for initialization. And then if you just click on this ultrasonic sensor, it shows the distance of the car. So right now by default it was 113 centimeters, which means that is, it is between 100 50 and 100 centimeters so the green LED should be off so basically the car is going to be coming from the outside so all the LEDs as you can see they are off so as soon as the car enters or is close enough to the ultrasonic sensor between so the distance is say between 150 centimeters and 100 centimeters the green LEDs would turn on which means that it is safe for the driver to proceed further and then as the car approaches the front wall further as soon as it hits um, it is below 100 centimeters these yellow LEDs would turn on which would indicate the driver that they should be prepared to stop and they should proceed with caution and then as the driver approaches the front wall of the garage further the red LED would turn on indicating that you are at the safe um, spot to park you do not need to move forward and if you move forward then it's going to be um, not safe to do so and it may result in damage either to the front of the car or to the wall of the um, garage. So this is um, all about the car parking assistant. So you could play with this circuit. Um, so if you want to stop this simulation you just click on this stop simulation. If you want you can add some more features. You can add say more LEDs here. You could choose say 10 LEDs to improve the light intensity. You could also use say um, a buzzer to indicate that the driver needs to stop here. So you can add extra features if you want to. Um, you have a lot of uh, input and output devices you could use. For example, you could use a speaker, you could use some other things uh, such as uh, a resistor or a TIR sensor, a PPSO speaker um, to incorporate extra functionalities in this car parking assistant if you want to. Uh, so this is all up to you and all up to the designer what type of features they want to include in their um, product. In this case it's the car parking assistant. So anything that you think is going to be useful for the driver you can add it and you can also write their code and verify that your code is running properly by doing simulation. So that was all about Tinkercad. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me.